straight ahead on the local show. You've heard of taking classes in CPR and first aid so you can help others who may need medical help. What about a training course for those needing help with a mental illness? What if you have someone in your family or a longtime friend or co-worker suffering with a mental condition? How do you assist them? It's estimated that at some point in their lives, 50% of American adults will have a diagnosable mental health disorder. In a single year, it'll be one in four people. Next, we take you into a local class that teaches people the skills to deal with mental health emergencies. Oh, it's getting worse. It's getting much worse. I, I think my doctor's trying to poison me. See, so the tablets he gives me, they make me easy to control. So I, I just stopped taking, stop. Okay, so you've stopped taking your medication. Of, well, of course I did. Would you take pills that are poisoning you? <laughs> now they just keep talking to me instead. More than likely, you would know what actions to take if you saw someone having a heart attack. The question is, what would you do if you found someone in the middle of a mental health crisis? We all took first aid in junior high and high school, and we know how to put on the sterile compress and wash the wound. Well, mental health first aid is, in a sense, very similar to that. We're not diagnosing, we're not curing, we're enabling this individual to kind of get a handle on the moment and help them find an avenue that will help them get better. It's a program that has some research behind it. It's a program that deals with stigma. It's a program that people seem to embrace and understand. Anyone want to hazard a guess on a definition of mental health first aid? It is the help that's offered to a person developing a mental health problem or experiencing a mental health crisis, and the first aid is given until appropriate professional treatment and support are received or until the crisis resolves. Just like CPR, mental health first aid is a course that teaches you to be a first responder in a mental health crisis. Session one is today. We'll talk about our mental health first aid action plan. We'll go into depression. We'll talk about our action plan for suicidal behavior and depressive symptoms. The first class, we come out strong right out of the chute. Talk about why mental health first aid, what is it, what are mental health issues, and we cover several uh, diagnoses, their causes, symptoms, and what does it mean to have these mental health disorders. Well, what do you think is the most common mental health disorder in the United States? Depression. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health disorders, with depression second. The fact that anxiety ranks higher than depression in the mental health disorder list is just one of the many revelations of the class. Like this fact or myth question. People in the U.S. consume more alcohol than people in most other countries. Myth. Most people are surprised to learn that the U.S. isn't even among the top ten alcohol consuming countries. The class teaches you the risks and symptoms for the most prevalent mental health disorders. Anxiety, depression, psychosis, eating disorders, substance abuse, and self-injury. And for every disorder, there's an action plan. That's probably, you know, the thing that I think is most important. And so this is a koala bear from Australia, and so this bear is called algae. Algae stands for the action plan. Uh, algae is A-L-G-E-E. -E. A is assess the risk of suicide or harm. That's the first thing you always do in your intervention. The second is L. Listen non-judgmentally. Good. G. Give information. The first E. Encourage appropriate professional help. Very good. And the last E is encourage self-help and other support strategies. We've been doing it for three and a half years in Missouri. The program itself started in 2001 in Australia and is now in 15 different countries uh, throughout the world and still growing. The Missouri Department of Mental Health was instrumental in bringing the program to the United States along with their partners, the National Council for Community Behavioral Health and the Maryland State Department of Health and Hygiene. Burt Nash Community Health Center in Lawrence, Kansas, was one of the first pilot sites to test the new program. Um, the interesting thing about the research is that three things were true. Uh, one is that it increased the mental health literacy of attendees. It increased their tolerance and information about mental health disorders. But lastly, it increased participants' personal mental health that actually your mental health improves by virtue of taking this class. And that was kind of a sleeper outcome. That wasn't expected. We really want to get the word out that mental health disorders are common. 
one in four will suffer from a diagnosable mental health disorder in any given year, and that they're treatable. They're as treatable as physical health disorders. In the spectrum of treating mental health disorders, mental health first aid is considered an intervention treatment, particularly for suicide. Assess for risk, suicide, or harm. And we're going to spend some time on that today. We're actually going to practice um, how you go about doing that and how you go about asking someone if they're thinking about killing themselves, which is a pretty hard question to ask. Diane, I've noticed that you haven't been able to get out of bed lately and your house is kind of a mess. Is anything wrong? You don't seem to be feeling well. I'm just tired. You know. We did the simulation where first I played the person who was contemplating suicide and my partner played the role of the person who was trying to kind of talk me out of it, basically. Have you been thinking about killing yourself, Diane? Yeah. Did you ask the question? Yes. Yeah, okay, very her. good. So why don't you switch it? Okay, good. <laughs> and then we switched roles, and it was much harder for me to be the one who was trying to help than to be the one who needed help. And I think that, it, yeah, because you feel like this person's life is in your hands. One of the most powerful things that somebody that's a mental health first aider can do is really talk to somebody who's suicidal because it is more likely that a friend or a colleague or an acquaintance will come in contact with the uh, person that's suicidal than a mental health professional. Yes. I was amazed how quickly I was drawn emotionally into the whole thing. I mean, as if it were real. You know, they're thinking about it, and if I ask the wrong question or don't see some, see, seem sincere, are they going to... You know, like, oh, okay, thanks for trying, and then all of a sudden they go out the room, you know. And This isn't the first time no. you've thought about it when no. you mention it. It's just, yeah. that's just not. It just feels like something, something you don't want to ask because you don't really want to know the answer. Maybe. I think that's it, is that when we ask mm -hmm. the question, then you got to be ready mm -hmm. because if the answer is yes, you know, you're in it now. <laughs> yeah. The hope is that more and more people will be ready in the next 10 years because not only could a mental health disorder cost someone their life, it costs society $317 billion a year in disability benefits, in health care, and especially in lost earnings. The research shows that it takes over five years for many people to go from first symptom to actual first appointment. That's five years of unnecessary suffering and uh, delays in developmental milestones for young people, career choices for um, the rest of us. Uh, relationships, marriages, relationships with children, that's a lot of impact that is, uh, that is avoidable. The hope, too, is that mental health first aid will become as common as CPR and first aid training. The good news is research and personal experiences say it's already working. You won't be a therapist at the conclusion of this 12-hour course, and I know that's disappointing, but you will have a lot of good information that you can help your friends and family. It will actually help yourself. One individual called me, and she'd had an experience with a friend who was exhibiting everything we had learned about the possibility that this woman was going to commit suicide. And what the cl my classmate of mine did was ask her the question, do you have a plan? And it's something that we learned about, we practiced, and her friend came out and told her, absolutely, I do. And so with that, she was able to bring her to a place where she could get some help. She called me absolutely ecstatic because she said it worked. I really felt like I was able to make a difference. We do go on a lot of calls where uh, mental disorder uh, or uh, plays a part in that. And I, I feel that I have a better knowledge of when I go into a situation that uh, versus somebody having a bad day versus an actual mental disorder and try to uh, actually help them better. You're going to use mental health first aid, you know, once you take it. You can help somebody without having a PhD. <laughs> it's, it, it, um, it's pretty awesome.